Jesus said at the coming of the Son of Man, two will be in one field and one will be taken away and one left. In this video, we are going to find out what Jesus meant. Hello everyone, this is Rose Ramandi from Perfected by Blood Ministries and I am really excited to be back with you here in What Jesus Meant series because in today's video I'm going to talk about a verse that has been misused, mistranslated, misinterpreted and even made movies on it but it's not on base of the right understanding of the Bible and I want to go through many scriptures to open up that one verse and that's the verse that Jesus is talking in Matthew chapter 24 where he's talking about the coming of the Son of Man and then he says in verse 40 that there will be two men in will be in the field one will be taken away and the other other left and also in the next verse he says that two women will be grinding at the mail and one will be taken away and the other left so uh, my focus in this video is just to talk about the first verse that Jesus is talking about two men in the field and I will be touching on the second one also shortly because the moment we realize that one the second one is pretty much open so in this time that we are here and many people are talking about the end times and all the things that are happening I want to encourage you and everyone who's watching this video that we need to go back to the Bible we need to get back to the scriptures and let the scriptures interpret the scriptures we can't afford to let the history come and and it start explaining to us what the scripture is we can really afford to have dreams and visions to interpret the scriptures we can't afford that the world event come and interpret the scriptures for us we have to have it has to be the other way around we have to come to the scriptures and let this scriptures interpret another scriptures I think um, I need to just uh, we need to say that in the beginning of all of our videos because uh, some of you might be listening to this video and our teaching for the first time so I want to mention and I want I want to declare this here and make it clear here we don't look at the Bible as a history book even though Bible is a history book and all those events took place in the history but we believe that the the Bible is written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has the symbolic language and as Paul talk, talks in different places in his letters that he says that the, that the scriptures are written for admonishing for building us up and also for giving us a wisdom so that we can inherit that salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ has come for us to have it so Bible even though is a history book but for us today when we read it it is no longer history but also a mystery book a book that every single verse and every single letters in this book is revealing the Lord Jesus Christ and when we come when we come to the letters of Paul and Paul is talking about the mystery of Christ and eventually he comes to a point and he says that Christ in you is the hope of glory and if the Christ is the mystery that means he is inside of you and if every verse is referring to revealing the mystery of Jesus Christ that means when I read every verse if I want to find Jesus Christ I have to go inside of me where Christ is hidden in my heart so that I can bring him out as the glory to the world to be seen so therefore, if every verse that I'm taking, uh, we are going to take a look at it in the Bible, is starting from Genesis to Revelation, it is revealing Jesus Christ. It has always been about Christ. It has never been about the nation of Israel. It has never been about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It has never been about Moses and the temple. It has never been about that, even though those stories are written. But today, when we go back and we read those the stories we want to see them is revealing the Christ inside of us so every verse is revealing something that is happening inside of us about the death of Jesus 
inside of us, the resurrection of Jesus inside out of us. So that's why I just wanted to make it clear. And I think maybe we should do that every in for all of our videos that every verse that we will take a look at, we will find the Lord Jesus, we will find the Christ that is in us. And that's when we, we, are, we are sure that we are on track. So as I said, it has always been about the Christ. You know, Paul starts writing and he brings the story of Adam and Eve. And he says, this is the mystery of the Christ and the church. Go a little further. Paul brings the story of Abraham. And, and he says, you know, uh, it, it, uh, you know, we can even go a little back. Paul, uh, like uh, first Peter, we read it. And even Jesus said it. The story of Noah, it's about the Christ. You come to Abraham and Paul says, it's symbolic. Um, Isaac was that seed of the promise and Isaac is the Christ. So if it has never been about the Isaac, so it, will, it has never been about the nation of Israel. It was about the new nation of Israel in Christ Jesus. The whole story of the children of Israel going to Egypt, coming out of the Egypt, going to the wilderness, going to promised land, inheriting the promised land, destroying all their enemies, going to Babylon, come back to the promised land. They are all referring to Christ as we read it today, even though it took place for the nation of Israel. But it has nothing for us. If we take a look at the history of the Bible, there is nothing there for me. Like who cares what Abraham lived and how lived. But but I can learn from the life of Abraham. I can learn from the life of the children of Israel so that I can have wisdom in Christ and know what's going on in Christ. So I want to make this clear. So today that we are going to read this verse, we are going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take a look at some scriptures here. And if you don't grab your Bible and don't follow along with me, you will probably don't understand what I'm talking about clearly, or you just, you don't understand what I'm talking about. So, but if you grab your Bible and follow along with me as I go to different verses and we let the scriptures interpret another scriptures, the spirit has the symbolic language and Jesus here in Matthew chapter 24, he's answering a question about the destruction of the temple and the signs of his coming. So this video is not about going through the uh, going through the verse, uh, the chapter 24 of uh, Matthew, but uh, we will try to cover as many verses as we can in this series so that many questions will be answered as we go along. But we need to understand this one thing. When Jesus talked about the destruction of the temple in Matthew chapter 24, he was talking about the temple of his body because a few chapters earlier, uh, Jesus is asked, why are you cleaning the temple? And he said, destroy this temple and I will rise it up in three days. So, so we see here that uh, Jesus was in a natural temple and natural thing happened and people ask him about the natural physical temple, but he never answered about the natural physical temple. He answered about the temple of his own body. So now we come to Matthew 24 and Jesus was asked the same question about the destruction of the temple. So he starts talking about the destruction of the temple of the body of Adam, which was made of the stones of the law, not according to the grace of God. And that is that has to be destroyed. And then Jesus goes on and talks about the false teachers and the false prophets that they have the part to build the temple that is of that is made of the stone in the heart of people. And that is not the grace of God. And by the time we come to Matthew chapter 24, by the middle of that, Jesus is talking about the coming. And right before he says about two men will be in the field, he brings an example and the story of Noah. Again, we see the story of Noah here, but that took place in a history. But we want to know what does it mean in Christ and Christ is in us. What does it mean to have the flood of Noah in us today for us who we are in Christ? So now in uh, look at the uh, look at verse um, uh, 37 that Jesus is talking here and he says, but as the days of Noah were also will be the coming of the son of man. Verse 38, um, for as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage 
until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them. I, wanna, I want you to pay attention to the word took them all away so also will be the coming of the son of man so we want to link those verses together and read in the context the next verse jesus is talking about two men in the field and one will be taken away so now let's understand who is this one that is going to be taken away so in stories and even there is a left behind series that the movies is made is talking about the good people are going to be taken away and the rapture comes and and the believers will be off the earth but we want to see what the scripture says because jesus says it is like the days of noah what happened in the days of noah there was this flood who came and took away those people who didn't believe in the message of Noah because Noah was the preacher of righteousness. So they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage and then Noah and his family get into the ark and then the flood, flood came and took them away. And eventually the righteous ones, the eight people that were in the family of Noah, they came back to the earth, they stayed on the earth and they continued spreading on the earth. So do you see? Jesus says the coming of Jesus will be like the flood that will take away those that are ungodly or unrighteous. So then the next verse is talking about that there's two men in the field and one will be taken away. So what, which one of those men will be taken away? Is it the righteous one will be taken away or the unrighteous one? So linking to the story of Noah, the flood took away the unrighteousness, the unrighteous one, and the righteous one stayed on the earth. So this is very important to see it because before we move on and dig down to understand what the field is and who is those two men that are in the field, we are going to see it in details in this video but before we move on and understand those we need to see this first that the one who will be taken away is the unrighteous one and not the righteous one so therefore the stories that are okay waiting for this thing to come and take us away so take us as the believers and if we are the believers we are the righteous that doesn't line up with this scripture and i know probably the reason people say that in this uh, the doctrine of rapture is from first thessalonians chapter 4 i think verse 17 that we will be cut up and uh, but the scripture cannot contradict each other we either don't understand that or we don't understand this one so today we want to understand this one clearly and then hopefully one day we'll go to that one of scripture and opening up that one to understand that and if you have watched my video about the coming of jesus with the cloud that one verse is already open for you because you realize that the that the cloud is not the cloud out there is you when you believe in him and you stand in faith and the moment you walk in faith he comes because you are declaring him as the truth so i don't please go ahead and watch it if you haven't watched that so now today um, so now today we want to make sure that we understand the flood came and took away the unrighteousness on the earth and the righteous stayed on the earth so now there are two men in the field and one will be taken away the one will be taken away is the unrighteous one and that at the coming of the son of man that unrighteous one will be taken away even if you read in the old testament you can find that in multiple places that we read in the old testament that you know it is the it is the meek is going to inherit the earth the glory of god will will fill the earth so the earth is the lord's the earth is has never been for the devil and the angels to remain there or for people who don't know the lord jesus the earth is for him and we are here called to stay on earth and bring the kingdom of god from heaven on earth so so that the great so that grace can basically reign and rule so if we go to for example psalm chapter 37 we can see in one verse or we can see a couple of verse here actually that the evil doers are the one will be taken away from the earth look at verse 9 in psalm chapter 37 
It says, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Do you see? The earth is our inheritance and we are the one who's going to remain on earth to inherit the earth and the evil will be cut off from the earth. And even um, you can read that in verse 11 that says, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So there are many verses that I'm not going to take my time here because I think it's enough for the believing heart. One scripture is enough to believe. And for unbelieving heart, if I bring many scriptures, won't believe. So I think this is more than enough to see that um, the, the taking away of one of those two men that are in the field is taking away of the wicked one or taking away the unrighteous one or taking away the bad guy and not the good guy. So now let's go back here to verse 40 that uh, Jesus says, so the coming will be like this, like the days of Noah, then two will be in one field. So um, the translation has two men and it has men as italic here in my, in my Bible. And that means the word men is not in the original language. It could be right and it could be wrong. So what we want to see, there are two in the field and um, let's say two men, that's okay. And, and they are actually in one field. So now in order to understand this one verse, uh, we need to understand what the word field is and where can you find in the Bible talking about one field with two men in it. And the moment we find that, we can understand it with this one scripture better. And surprisingly, Jesus talked about it a few chapters before this. He knew he had already said the parable of the wheat and the tares, and now he's bringing an example because he has already explained that parable to them. And once Jesus is talking about two men in the field, they already knew about that parable and they already knew about um, what, what Jesus is really talking about. So let's go to Matthew chapter 13. And in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus, it's a famous chapter. It's where Jesus is basically bringing um, parables after parables in Matthew chapter 13. The first parable that Jesus brings in Matthew chapter 13 is the parable of the sower and the seed. We are going to take a look at it shortly. But the parable that we want to see the field in it, it's the parable of the wheat and the tares that starts in verse 24. So we want to see one field with two men in this field. Verse 24, another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good, good seed in the field. So we see the first man and we see the field here. It's actually the same word as field. So the, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in a field. So we have a man, we have the field. Now let's move on to verse 25 and we can see the second man here, verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the, among the wheat and went his way. So do you see? So there is a man who sowed in the field and now there is another man who sows something else, but he sows the tares in there. So do you see? But it says he was the enemy who came and sowed the tear in there. So do you see one field with two men and they are sowing in the field. So Jesus said there are two men in the field. What is the purpose of the field? He didn't say two men in the house or he brought the word field because field is the place that the sowing and reaping happens. It's the, it's the uh, land for sowing things. It's the, uh, the land that there is a farmer that is working on it. And that is the word field. And here in this verse, we see that there is this man who is sowing the good seed and there is a second man who is sowing this, the, the another, another seed basically there. So by now, some of you might have said, oh, okay. So, and that verse is already started opening up for us that what does it mean that one will be taken away? But be patient here because we want to see more details and we want to go a little deeper and understand this deeper. 
Okay, so we want to we want to know now. We saw, we saw two men. One is the good man, and one is the enemy who's sowing the tears. So at the coming of the Son of Man, one will be taken away. Which is which one is going to take away? The enemy, the one who is sowing the bad seed. So that one is going to be taken away. So the Son of Man comes to destroy the enemy, to remove the one who's sowing tears in the field. But interestingly the parable before that jesus is again talking about the sowing and the reaping and he in chapter 13 uh, beginning of chapter 13 he jesus is talking about the parable of the sower and the seed and again he's talking about the seed that is planted in the ground in the field and i'm not going to go read it but please go read it because in uh, verse 19 he says that field is the heart of people and the seed that he's sowing is the word of god so basically there is a field that and there is a seed and there's someone who's sowing the seed that field is your heart and that seed is the word of god in your heart and the one who's sowing this is the son of man so now but he says there's another one he's also sowing this so where is this then this is happening inside of us if the place that the word of god is getting sown is your heart so therefore the son of man is inside of you and the enemy is inside of you so you have two men working on the field of your heart one is sowing the good seed and one is sowing the bad seed which is the tears and now there is the coming of Jesus Christ who comes and take away one of this because you are the land for him and he wants to sow his own seed in your heart and because he wants the word of God to start growing in you and eventually comes to um, bearing the fruit for the kingdom of God. So now it's interesting, it's interesting that if you go on and read this uh, story, um, so, um, you know, we can, uh, we can see verse 27 that it says, So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does, he have, does it have tears? 28. And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, no, let's, let's while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reaper, so do you see the coming of the son of man? So it's the time of harvest that he shows up again because it's the time of harvest. So he, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, so the disciples heard this story and I am so happy that they asked the question from, for, for Jesus and Jesus answered that. If they haven't done that, we probably would have really thought that Jesus is talking about natural physical land and the farmer. But now Jesus brought this example and he started explaining to the disciples. Now let's look at uh, verse 37 that um verse 36 that they are asking jesus then jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house and his disciples came to him saying explain to us the parable of the tears of the field it's interesting because they didn't say can you explain to us the parable of the wheat of the field what they asked for the parable of the tears of the field and it's really good because their focus is like, okay, we know the wheat because you just explained the parable of the sower and the sea, but what are the tares? You didn't talk about the tares. So now look at verse 37. So Jesus, he answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. All right, so this is very clear. And the field is the world. So, okay, hold on a second. Before we move on and says, okay, the field is the world. We need to understand that one thing in the kingdom, in the language of the spirit can have different names because it's revealing different aspects of that thing to us. For example, Jesus is called the Lamb of God and he's also called the 
um, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So do you see for one person, we have two different names because every name or every name, name that is given, it is revealing something different about that person. So that's why when we talk about the seed, this seed is the word of God and this seed, and it has, it, it has different names for the same thing. So now here, Jesus said the field is the world. In the parable of the sower and the seed, Jesus said actually this field, which is the ground, and the, the seeds are sown in your heart, it is actually your heart. So therefore, we see your heart, your heart is the world. There is a world inside of you that is like a garden because there's a field and there's a farmer, there's a river of life, there is watering, there's a cloud, there's water come from cloud, there's wind, there's, do you see, if the field is your heart, then the cloud and the rain and the wind and the rivers of life and the farmers and the reapers, they are all something internally that happens inside of us. We can't afford to take one in to see as a heart and another out there. So that's why Jesus says, you know what, actually, let's say the field is the world because he now goes general in what he's talking about here. So now let's continue reading verse 38 that says the field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. Okay, wait here. So um, I'm, I'm giving you more revelations uh, as we read through this. So that is that can help you to start seeing and opening up the scriptures as you read it. It says the seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the parable before this, Jesus said the seed is the word of God. So now we can't just look at them differently. It's one seed, but it has different names to reveal different mysteries of this seed to us. So the seed is the word of God. And the moment that word is planted in your heart, that becomes the son of the kingdom. So do you remember in 1 Peter says you have been born again from the incorruptible seed of the word of God? The reason you and I are called the sons of God, it's because of the word that we are being, that we are born again from the word of God and because of the spirit that has come upon us and has made us the sons of God. So now the seed, that means the word of God is that son of God that is being planted in your heart and if the seed was is supposed to grow and come to maturity and bear fruit therefore that means the son of God can be in the form of a seed inside of us and the son of God can grow and be a mature one in us so do you see it's all about the word of God it's all about the word that becomes flesh and we read that in John chapter 1 that the word became flesh and he dwelt among us and now that happened once inside in one person who was called Jesus of Nazareth and now we are born of the same seed the word of God we are born of the spirit so it's time for us that the spirit and the word come together and reveal and create as happened in Genesis create a new creation which is the new man in Christ Jesus. So do you see that, the, okay, he's coming and he's planting the seed in your heart because the whole story is that the word of God comes to maturity inside of you so that you become the word that became flesh. One more time, happened in one, now needs to happen here. So, so the story is, if that is the story and God is planting the seed in you, see, he wants to make sure that the word of God is planted, the word of God is watered, the word of God is grown, the word of God bears fruit in your life. So that's why he keeps coming to remove what is holding this you back from this process of maturity so that you can grow into your identity as the son of God. So we want to see that today in this video, this first stage that Jesus is talking on the time of sowing, there will be two and one will be taken away. So we are going to see shortly that in every stage, it is the coming of Jesus that will take away the enemy that is trying to creep in and don't let you to grow into the fullness of who you are. 
So let's continue. So the seed is the sons of the kingdom, but we know the seed is the word of God. So the word is the sun inside of us. So now, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. So, so therefore the tares are some kind of a word that is also explained here as the son of the wicked. The seed, the good seed is the word that is the son of the kingdom. So the tares are a word that are the sons of the wicked one. So we we'll look at verse 39. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. So have you, um, don't we talk that in the end of the age or in the end of the world that Jesus is coming. So the time of the harvest is the time that he's coming actually to take away the sons of the wicked one so that the wheat can be gathered and later on sent to the um, uh, sent to some people to um, to grind them to make flour out of it and from the flour to build the bread and eat the bread of life so now let's take a look here so the devil is the enemy that sowed them so where is the devil working in your heart sowing the seeds that are the bad seeds and producing tears. It's interesting, if, if you just Google the tears, the interesting part is the tears look exactly like the weeds. I came from a farmer background back home. My grandpa was a farmer and he used to harvest and he used to plant weeds actually in his field. And we would go there and he would just go by the field sometime and grab some of those um, you know, the, mm, the weeds or tares because he was checking to see if it has the seed inside. And I remember so many times I would just like grab one of them and I say, hey, grandpa, uh, so, uh, so they are growing and he would just tell me, no, that's the tear. So mm, because they look exactly like that. And he said, the, re the reason you can realize it's only in the time of harvest or you can just go by, by them and, and touch them to see they have the seed inside or no. But, uh, but really it's this, they, they look exactly the same and that this is what happens it says okay the son of man comes and he's sowing the word of God inside of you the enemy comes and he sows another word but it looks exactly like the word of God and once you see them you can't really differentiate them until the time of harvest arrives and when they start harvesting them and separating the chaff from the from the seeds then you realize oh there are tares and these are the tares because they don't come to the harvest so so there is the enemy inside of us that is sowing there is the enemy that is working to make sure that it's he's sowing a seed that is actually a tear to fill our ground and we don't come into that fruitation. We don't come to bearing the fruit. And that's why when a farmer starts sowing the weeds or anything, there is a 30-fold harvest or 60-fold harvest or 100-fold harvest. It depends on how much uh, the good seed they it came out of the ground how much the good seed grew and how less the tear was in that ground and Jesus said some will bear hundred folds hundred folds amen all right so uh, let's move on here uh, but uh, okay before we move on to uh, verse 41 which Jesus is going a little deeper in understanding I want to recap what we just said all right, so this guy who is sowing the tear and the bad seed inside of us, it will be taken away at the coming of the Son of Man. And he, when he comes, he's going to come and take that one that is working in you to remove that, that one who's sowing the seeds. And now Jesus, all of a sudden in verse 41, he, 41, he gives more information to us. And he says, the Son of Man will send out his angels. Do you see? In Matthew 24, he says, the Son of Man will come with the angels. And here says he sends out, but he's not going to sit home and send somebody else. He's coming with the angels. Verse 42, uh, sorry, verse 40, 41. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend 
and those who practice lawlessness. All right. Right before that, he says, gather the tares. Now here says, gather all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. Verse 42, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth at the sun in the, uh, as the sun in the kingdom of his father. He who has ears to hear, let them hear what the spirit says. Okay, so now here's the thing. It says, actually, the tears are everything that offends you. Everything that is an offense to the word of God. Everything that is an offense to the truth of God. Everything, everything that is not of the truth, that will be taken away. Who is the devil here? The serpent of old, as Revelation chapter 12 is telling us, this the old serpent, the devil, Satan, and the dragon. They're all the same. And it's the old serpent who came to deceive people and bring them out from the right way. What was the right way? The way that will take you to the tree of life. So the devil will come and take you out of that. So you don't get to the tree of your life. You get to another way, which is death and destruction. So, but how is this happening? It's through a word. A word that comes and you think and you believe it in your heart and you hold it like a tear, but it's actually a tear and it's not the word of God. That's why we read it in the book of Revelation. We read in the beginning of chapter 24 that Jesus is talking about the false teachers, false prophets, false Christ, that they are bringing a message to you that looks like the word of God, but it will never come to fulfillment. It never come to um, bearing fruit. It never comes to harvest because they have nothing. They're empty. They have nothing in there to come into that. So that's why he says, all right, so there is a coming that he comes to sow the seed. But what is he going to do? He's going at the coming to take away the evil, the, the one who is sowing the tears inside of you. Two men in one field, one will be taken away. But here's the interesting part is, and then he waits for the time of harvest to see if there is some residual of the offense inside of you. If there is still some beliefs that we have and it is not according to the truth. If there is still the tears. So now it comes and he's the time of harvest and he takes the weeds away and burns the sons of the wicked. That means the beliefs that you believe and conceived inside of you, the seeds that you believed and you held it as the seed in your heart and all of a sudden it started growing and now it doesn't have anything in it. So he comes and he says, you know what? I'm coming and I will burn those things. So that's why I want to say this. Sometimes we have the word of God and we hear the word of God and we believe it in our heart and we are excited and we move on and we realize tears starts coming out. And now here's the thing, you don't have to worry about it because he's coming to remove the tears and he's coming to bring that uh, message of truth over again and again to you until all the unbelief is uprooted. All the unbelief in our heart is burned in the fire and it's all now wheat. And now we can use that word of God and make bread out of it. So let's go to Matthew chapter 24. And the next, the next verse that Jesus is talking there is um, talking about two women. Um, we use the word women as the italic, but two will be grinding at the mail and one will be taken away. Why is Jesus is bringing that example? Why is the grinding at the mail? It is when they use the wheat that they just harvested, they bring it to the, for the, they bring it to, um, to make flour out of it so they can make uh, bread. So do you see sowing of the word of God in our heart is just the beginning of this amazing journey. It needs to come to a place that becomes the bread and we eat that bread and that is the bread that gives us eternal life. So there is a journey and in so there is a sowing, there is a reaping and there is turning into the 
uh, uh, flour in the milestone or grinding and now there's a time there is a cooking of the bread and now there's a time of the eating of the bread and in every single step he's coming to remove the guy the evil that is sowing the tear then he comes at the harvest to remove the residual if there is a seed and unbelief as a tear still he removes it and he burns it and then he comes to this level this uh, time that we are uh, making a flower out of the word of God because we want to eat it and now he comes and he takes away another one why because if there is a still a one if there is a still someone who's grinding the offense inside of our bread inside of our flour the leaven which we use later for the bread but if there is a still uh, uh, tears that have found their ways to the grinding site and they are getting mixtured with the bread of life he comes and he takes that away and then he comes to the bread and Jesus said many times be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees which is hypocrisy which is offense at the time we are making the leaven he's coming again to make sure that our bread remains pure of the truth so that we can eat and have eternal life so i think this is amazing i think that we can expect the coming of jesus in every levels of maturity we are and in every level of growth that we are are you in a place that you want the seed to be sown he is coming. Are you in the place that you want the rain so the seed can grow? He is coming. Are you in the place that it's a time of harvest? He is coming. Are you in the place you want to make the bread and you want to make the word of God as a food and eat it? He is coming to make sure that every offense and everything that offends in you, every unbelief is taken away out of the way so he comes like the flood to remove and take away everything that wants to mixture the truth with the offense with the lie that's why this is the whole story of the coming of Jesus and when you go to the book of Revelation you come across the city that is called Babylon and Babylon has to be destroyed and amazing thing it says in Babylon in uh, Revelation chapter 11 uh, I think in verse 21 or 22 that it says uh, that um, uh, the saw in the no in the noise of the milestone will never be heard in in Babylon so what is he talking about what is the milestone the milestone it was two stones that they would go on top of each other and they use for grinding the seeds so it says there will be a time that there will be no seed that is being produced in Babylon who is the Babylon the mother of harlots as Revelation chapter 17 is talking about the mother of harlots the abomination the offense to the Lord so it is the it is the place that all the the false prophets and teachers are being fed by that law lie from Babylon so there will be a there is this city of lies so there will be a time that there will be no seed that you will hear the sign of the grinding in Babylon because they are grinding the word so it can give it to you as a food to eat it and they tell you this is how you can have eternal life but Jesus said no I am the bread of life how did he become the bread of life he, be, he was the word who became flesh so the word planted and it started growing and it came to the time of harvest and harvested flour now bread so you can eat and have eternal life so I think this is this is really encouraging and I think this is called the good news and when I put those uh, scriptures together I don't understand how and when we came to realize that Jesus is coming out there and not he's not coming from inside out I don't understand when I put those verses together that like how do you explain the coming of Jesus if if these verses are in the Bible if it's all about the Word of God that is planted in you and needs to become bread and food for you to eat and have eternal life so I want to say that um, rejoice it doesn't matter what level of growth you are he's coming to take you to the next step so you can get finally to a place that you eat the bread that is unleavened unoffended 
the bread that doesn't have any wheat in it, any tear in it, any offense in it, the truth of the word of God that has no mixture with any other doctrines or any other things. Bless you guys and I hope um, that this answered a lot of questions and actually started opening up a little for you Matthew chapter 24 and I'm, I'm believing that the following weeks I'm going to talk more about the verses in Matthew chapter 24 to realize that the coming of Jesus is something internally he comes inside and out side of us this is the message of the gospel it's where we can stay on earth we can believe in the truth of god and he comes for us and he comes out of us for others because we are now the body of the lord jesus christ if you have any questions please uh, leave a comment or if you don't maybe you don't agree i love to see the comments like that so please go ahead and do it but please be open to hear my answers too and please like and share uh, this message with someone else and um, until next week the grace of the lord jesus christ be with you